What is going on you guys? Welcome to Garage Denali. Uh, this video is going to be a little tutorial on how to swap out these buttons right here in your steering wheel, these cruise control buttons, for more sophisticated ones. And that is these ones over here. So as you can see, all of the cruise control buttons are moved to the left side. And then we have our stereo controls as well as our climate control uh, temperature buttons right here on the right side. Now the reason why I want to switch over to these buttons is because ever since I did this head unit upgrade, it's a little uh, difficult sometimes, it's kind of annoying to get up here and change the volume. I really only have the right half of the uh, knob here to control the radio, but on top of that, I, I can't really adjust the volume on my phone if I have it plugged in to Apple CarPlay because that sets the volume all the way to max, so you can only control it from here. So that, that's fine, but the thing is, uh, my old car was a BMW, and of course I had all the controls right here on the steering wheel, so I miss having my volume controls. So, um, besides, I don't wanna have to bother to take my hands off the wheel when I'm changing the volume. If I'm doing like 45, 50 miles an hour, the volume is loud, especially if the windows are open. And then when you get to a stop, you know, you don't want the music to be at level 40, so everybody looks at you and you're attracting all this attention. So I just wanna be able to turn it down as I slow down and turn it up as I drive faster. So this is gonna bring a lot of convenience, so this video is gonna show you guys how to do this, so uh, we'll jump right into it. And uh, I will leave the part numbers for these pieces right here in the video or even in the video description. You can get these brand new from Ford, they're like $50 a piece for each half, and then you also need the uh, appropriate wiring harness for this, because you need a specific one. The one that's behind the wheel here, if you have, the buttons that I have here, it will not work, so you'll have to swap them out. Uh, I believe this DIY, this uh, retrofit can be done on any car, really any Panther platform car. These buttons came from a higher trim, like the very high trim Crown Victoria, the high trim Mercury Grand Marquis, and also the Lincoln Town Car. So I'm pretty sure as long as, uh, I know you can get cruise control added to these cars, so as long as you have that, all, you really should only just need these three components right here, and then it should be a direct plug and play. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go under the hood and remove the positive terminal from the battery. We are going to be removing the airbag, so we don't want to mess with anything like that. So just go ahead remove that terminal so we don't have any power flowing through the system. After you do that, you're gonna have to get an Allen key and right behind the steering wheel here, uh, there's four holes where we gotta put this in and basically there's a couple uh, tension springs in there. What you wanna do is you wanna put your Allen key in at about this angle and you just wanna kinda tap it a little bit. You wanna feel for where you hear that it's touching like a metal pin because basically you're putting in the uh, Allen key at this angle if it's on the right and then at this angle if it's on the left and you want to kind of push it in so it it goes like this because basically that's pushing the coil or the uh, the spring back the preloaded spring uh, I have a video on this on how to remove the steering wheel that goes more in depth but that's what you want to do it is a little bit tricky so just giving you guys a heads up um, if you're doing it right you'll notice that when you push it it kind of pushes my Allen key back, so that means I'm right on the spring there. So that's what you want to do. All right, so that one required the most force. Just use like the palm of your hand really when getting this off. Okay, so once you have the airbag out, um, I am assuming we can do this without having to actually unplug the airbag, but this is what I was referring to why you want to disconnect the battery because we're gonna I thought we were gonna be pulling these off. We'll see if we need to, hopefully not. But what we need to do now is you need to grab a Torx T20 and you have one here holding this switch panel on and then you got another one over here. So basically you just get, you remove that from each side and uh, the switches pop right out. And as you can see, we have our wiring harness right in here. So we're gonna figure out exactly how that works and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so now what I'm doing here is after I got the screw out, I started prying it from the edge here, from the edge away from the wheel, 
and then with with one hand then with my other hand I'm peeling back this a little rubber here part of the steering wheel so you want to be careful because this looks like it's already starting to crack a little bit but you want to pry it out ever so slightly just so you can start to get this out and ever so slowly you're gonna be able to get this out just like that so once you do that you can go ahead and unclip it from back here and do the other side so once again the way I'm doing it is I'm starting right up here and I'm kind of prying it out but I'm also trying to get it from the side here as well. You can probably use a screwdriver or a pry tool, make this a lot easier. But for me, it's just easy enough that I can get away just by using my hands. So just like that, being very careful. You probably should use a pry tool, honestly. There you go. And then this just pops right out. Once again, unhook this from the harness, and it can come out. Okay, so now we need to figure out how we're going to get our wiring harness in. So you can see this end here is for the controls. You can see this connector here is slightly different than that one, and vice versa. Um, well, it's a little bit different. It looks like it's only this side that's different, really. But as you can see, this is our harness, which will plug right here in the center. We have a plug here, which goes right into the wheel. Not 100% sure what that is, it could be a ground, but then we definitely got a ground right here, so we gotta get that out too. So, that should also be a T20. Yep, so we're gonna get that out, and then it uh, looks like this is just taped together here. So we're just gonna go ahead and wiggle this out, and uh, it's not even taped in actually, so yeah, you should be able to just fish this out and uh, get the other one in, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm trying to fish this wire out through here, but it's it's not working, so uh, I think we're going to have to remove the wheel in order to do this correctly. So what you're going to have to do is go ahead and grab a Torx T50 so we can get this center bolt out. Once again, I do have a video on this. If your steering wheel has never been off, it might be tight, and you might need like a steering wheel extractor tool. If not, you're just going to have to bang on both sides, on the front, on the back, to get it off. Because that way we'll have a lot more, we should have a lot more room back here to work. So go ahead and do that. One thing to keep in mind is to be 100% very careful when removing this. You don't want to strip this and knock on wood, you don't want to shear this either. Because if you do, you're done. So be very careful with this bolt here, this little screw, not to mess it up. With that, put it in a safe place, and uh, go ahead and remove your wheel. Just like that, get your wheel off. And then you're gonna have a couple of more Torx screws in here, so we're gonna have to go ahead and get those off. Because really, we have to get this whole assembly out if uh, we wanna be able to access these wires here. So go ahead and do that. So these little Torx here are T30, so go ahead and grab a Torx uh, T30, and let's get these off. And now what's going to happen is this whole back panel is going to come out, and uh, that will make our job a million times easier. So I don't know if you, ha I don't know how well you guys can see. Let me do this. So those three uh, T30s, they hold this back cover on. So. Instead of trying to, I mean, honestly, you're never going to get this out from the front. So just go ahead and pop this off, and uh, that's pretty much how you're going to do this. So now we're going to go ahead and get our new harness in for our new controls. So this is our harness right here. So once again, we have the four on the left, so that's going to go here. Just fish that in through the hole like that, and do the same with the other one. So this should route just like that. So now go ahead and take your cover. We're going to get this cover back on. Nice and simple. Make sure you don't pinch anything when you pick, when you get this back on. It's very important. So it looks like there's some channels here for this to run through. So go ahead and do that. That way the job is done right. So make, actually, let's get this centered here. So what you're going to do is, you're going to want all this to be right about in the center, just like that. So go ahead and run these wires right. 
you'll see there's channels here for that. So go ahead and do that. Once this is about centered, go ahead and take your cover, pop it back on. And it should go on flush. Just like that. So now you're going to go ahead and take your T30 screws. Right, so now you can take your wheel and go ahead and get it mounted right back on the steering shaft. So go ahead and fish this wire right through here in the middle. And uh, make sure that your two discs here, you got two little plates here, make sure that they match up. You'll see an arrow right here for top. You want them both to match up because if that's not the case, then your wheel's not going to be straight for your clock spring. So go ahead and run the wire through and once again, Take note that there are two little flat spots right here, right in the center, and those correspond to two flat spots right here on the steering shaft. So make sure you do that. Do that correctly and carefully. Get your wheel placed, and then ever so gently kind of wiggle it, make sure it's on tight. And then you should be able to get it pushed in, just like that, so that wheel is pretty much straight so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get some Loctite to get that center bolt back on we don't want that bolt to vibrate off while we're driving that'd be very bad so go ahead and get some Loctite on that and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get our steering wheel fastened when I made my video on how to remove the steering wheel some of you guys were commenting saying don't use the red one because uh, you're gonna need heat to remove that well when I removed this nut just now uh, before I got the wheel off, it was uh, surprisingly loose, and that's kind of sketchy if I'm honest. Surprisingly loose, but not sure why that is, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is tight. But that's why we want to use our Loctite, because we don't want this to vibrate off, especially something as critical as a steering wheel. Alright, so that's tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug our harness in right here at the bottom. Just like that. And then we're going to take this little wire here. This is a ground. We're going to go ahead and screw that, screw that right back in here. And now we're going to go ahead and hook up our airbag back on. So you got these two cables right here. And then you got this third one right here. And then uh, beyond that, really, you just got to get your controls, your switches plugged in. And then... Hook up your battery and test it out. Alright, so before we get our airbag back on, we're just going to go ahead and get our switches settled. So go ahead and connect these two. They should just snap in just like that. And then, honestly, reverse process of what we just did. This should fit right in nice and snug. Of course, be mindful for this little flap right here. Make sure you don't get it crushed. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, this time with your volume controls. Make sure the screw holes line up perfectly, that there isn't, you know, any kind of uh, negative tension or anything like that. And uh, afterwards, go ahead and get the screws back in. So once again, these are our T20s. Alright, so as you can see, our buttons are in. They seem to work okay. I mean... They seem to work. We're going to confirm. This is definitely not going to work because I don't have automatic climate control. But volume should work. I'm assuming that'll work. All the cruise control should still work, so everything is plugged in. So we're going to go ahead and connect our airbag, hook up the positive terminal back on the battery. All right, guys, so there you go. That is uh, basically the process on what it takes in order to install steering wheel volume controls into your Crown Vic, Mercury Grand Marquis, or other Panther platform vehicle that has this style steering wheel that may not have volume controls. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to show you guys the volume controls actually working because I no longer have my stock head unit. I have an aftermarket one, and that requires an adapter in order to work for these controls, so I'm going to have to go ahead and make a separate video for that. But if I did have my factory head unit, this should work. So theoretically it should work. Based on the research I've done, it does work. So I can't demonstrate that for you. I did go out for a drive and I can confirm that the cruise control does work. So you do have that. But essentially what we were looking for here are the volume controls. So, um, you know, I don't have the digital 
uh, climate control, I have the analog one, so these controls here are not going to work for that. But with my head unit, I can reprogram that, for example, you know, take a call, decline a call, etc. So, theoretically, and I'm almost positive this should work in a car that does have the factory head unit, but I no longer have it, so there is that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you very much, and take care.